One o'clock on a dreary day and the time ball dropped at the Greenwich Observatory. There was ice on the prime meridian and ice on the rigging of the broad beamed barges down on the busy Thames. Skippers marked the time and tide and set their oxblood sails against the northeast wind. A freight of iron was bound for Whitechapel foundry where bells tolled fifty against the anvil as if time were running out. Time was being served behind the walls of Newgate Jail and wasted by philosophers in cafes on the Strand. It was lost by those who wished the past were present and loathed by those who wished the present past. Oranges and lemons rang the chimes of St Clement's and Westminster's division bell was dumb. Time was money in the Royal Exchange, where men passed the afternoon diminishing their hope of threading camels through a needle's eye, and in the offices of Hoban Bars the long-toothed cog of a master clock caused an electric charge to set its dozen slave clocks chiming. All the clerks looked up from their ledgers, sighed and looked down once more. On Charing Cross Road, time exchanged its chariot for buses and cabs in urgent fleets, and in the wards of Barts and of the Royal Borough, pain made hours of minutes. In Wesley's chapel they sang, the sands of time are sinking and wished they might sink faster, and yards away the ice was melting on the graves in Bunhill Fields. In Lincoln's Inn and Middle Temple, lawyers eyed their calendars and saw statutes of limitation expire. In rooms in Camden and Woolwich, time was cruel to lovers, wondering how it got so late so soon, and in due course was kind to their ordinary wounds. Across the city, in terraces and tenements, in high society and low company and in the middle classes, time was spent and squandered, eked out and wished away, and all the time it rained an icy rain.